Welcome to Lime Regis Fossil Walks. I'm going to show you a little fossil hunting clip I made in the summer and then I'm going to show you our December fossil collecting. This is a quick little video of me in the summer months looking for the particular Arneosaurus bodleii rocks that I've come to know well over many, many years. Now have a look at me in December here, heading out west to Monmouth Beach. time it's seen the light of day in all those millions of years that's a really nice one to take back and do the preparation of fossil ammonites from the jurassic age well here i am through to the west of lime regis looking for arneoceros ammonites in those limestone there, nodules and i'll look between the rocks for fossil finds i'll just get some of the rocks out and away see if it's any good the sea's really battered that one a bit. It's a bit of a shame. There's some really nice low tides just before Christmas. So I'm gonna head out and see if I can find some more of that Arneoceros bodleii rock. I'm really looking forward to this trip in the sun. Well, it's nice to see some blue sky, but it really has been very wet here along the Jurassic coast. And you can see here on the beach, as I walk along, part of a really big ammonite and a smaller one just up from it. They're nice to see and leave for other people to see. You can tell it's been a stormy period of time. Look at all those big logs washed up against the cliff face. A really nice geological feature and I'm going nowhere near those cliffs they're very dangerous liable to fall suddenly and without warning one large rotational landslide I once witnessed came down across the beach with huge limestone blocks and that was completely quiet sometimes these little birds that pick the small creatures off the cliff face like sandhoppers they come out and make quite a noise chirping away and that's usually a precursor to a lump of the cliff falling down. A lot of the time you'll see little paper shells come fluttering down before a large landslide and here's quite a big block that's fallen from on high with quite a thump. So you really must watch out for the cliffs along the Jurassic coast. Well here's a nice cobble of calcite ammonites I found along the shoreline at low tide and I'll get it and break it up and show you how it splits I can see quite a few ammonites there, even though it's quite dry, the rock. I'll wet it and show you more. The ammonites have been ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea. So let's just wet that rock and show you. Well, I would have said that was a really good piece of the Arneosaurus bodleii rock. And you can see on the outside of the rock, all those ammonites ground down and you can see the calcite that has formed in them and there's quite a big sort of section of one on the top where I'm aiming for now with the hammer and I'm having a tap where the line of weakness is which is the fossil hopefully inside but can you see that it's split really awkwardly and I'm giving it a tap exactly where I usually know those things open up quite well and look at that it's just broken open all over the place that really was a sort of frost shattered rock it must have been out in the elements for too long and that hasn't survived very well look at this other block here you can see quite a few little borings in the rock where creatures have eaten through the rock but it's still quite packed full of lovely calcite ammonites the arneoceros bodleii ammonites and also two 
Euagacisurus, the fat little ammonites you find in those particular blocks, really nicely preserved in the calcite. So I'm turning it and twisting it to see which should be the way I strike this rock. But a lot of the time when they're really compacted with the calcite ammonites, they tend to split at many different angles. And you notice too, the way I hold the hammer to the rock, I've got it at a slight angle as I tap at it with my safety glasses on to reveal them. And I've got to really think as to how to break each piece of the rock and split through it. So I get maximum ammonites out of it that don't break or fall apart. So I'm really trying to achieve those nice little ammonites popping right out of the rock. And it's really nice fun doing that work on the beach when you locate one of those really good right rocks. I've been doing it for many years. There's a heron down there in the distance looking for fish and you can see the tide is starting to roll in. I'm going to show you the Ammonite graveyard now as we walk down back through towards Lyme Regis and look at all those lovely Ammonites from the Jurassic era all preserved on that big limestone bed and sadly that limestone bed is really cracking apart so at low tide it's a really good time to walk up and see the rest of the remains of these prehistoric ammonites all eroding away, but it's a scientifically important spot and a protected spot for everyone to see, so you all get a chance, but geologically speaking, this is eroding away at a rate of knots daily. And you can see here in the lovely sun just before Christmas that they're eroding away during the day and during the night, all the tides that are coming over them, especially the spring tides that are heading here this Christmas. So I'm going to head back down towards the cob. You can see down there in the distance. I'm going to show you a few features. Can you spot the iron pyrite ammonite in the, the top corner of this picture? And it's fossilized in fool's gold. There's plenty of fool's gold iron pyrite on the beach. The iron pyrite's heavy. The ammonites preserved in iron pyrite are heavy. They get all congregate in the same pocket. The sea doing the work for you, washing them out into certain areas. And that's why you can come along and spot them when you locate the pyrite fields. Do you see just up here, a little one preserved in the iron pyrite. Well, it's always good to get down onto your hands and knees in these places so you can see directly to the ground to try and find these little pockets of iron pyrite with the iron pyrite ammonites in like Promicrocerus. That species is quite prevalent in the iron pyrite fields. And also to bits of crinoid, the ossicles of the sea lily. And uh, here's a little piece here, small stem very eroded by the sea's actions but uh, I'll get it up to the camera and hopefully you can see if I enlarge it well it's nice to find crinoid specimens wherever you go I love those star-shaped ossicles and the kids on the fossil walks always think they found a starfish when they bring one of the ossicles up to me looking like a star shape and here you can see some liquefied mud that's come down across the beach and people do get stuck in that quite frequently so do watch out for that so i hope you've enjoyed this christmas special out along the west beach i was fossil collecting and as you go back into town and then it gets darker look at all the lovely decorations of lime regis i'm going to take you around the town and show you some of the special decorations with the big Lime Regis tree there, all nicely decorated with star on the top. You always get this really quiet kind of no man's land period before Christmas at Lime Regis. It's very quiet and it's lovely to walk around the street and see all the decorations and sights. But as the Christmas holidays really start to take on and Christmas Day has come and gone, lots of people frequent the seaside again at Lime Regis and it gets very, very busy here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for other awesome fossil hunting videos. See you in the new year.